Hey, what's up guys? F- minus here. You guys looking for some tips to progress in Sword Fighter Simulator? Are you guys stuck on a certain map? You can't kill certain enemies? Well, you guys came to the right place. If you guys are watching, make sure you like the video as well right now. Comment down below, add a thousand likes. I can start buying some more Robux for you guys so I can give you those game passes. These game passes can help you guys progress in the game as well. I can give you guys the chest egg here. We already know the next update for Sword Fighters is coming out pretty soon, so help yourselves out, like the video right now. A lot of you guys have been asking me though in the comments and whenever you join my games, how you guys can progress faster, that you guys need help in Sword Fighter Simulator. So that's why I'm doing this video today. I'm going to give you guys my top three tips so you guys can progress faster in sword fighters if you guys are having trouble killing enemies you guys are having trouble getting to the next map maybe you don't have enough money to buy school lunch or maybe not enough money to buy the eggs so you guys can get better pets maybe you guys are still using commons from the last map well i'm about to show you guys how you can get the legendaries the mythics the secrets like i said these are my top three tips for you guys i've already done a video like this before in the past but that was when i was still a newbie technically f minus is now a pro you can see my stats on the left side i got 16 qad coins and we got 790 ocd power if you're watching this video this is like four days delayed so i'm probably already ascended to the next rank and that's gonna be 5.3 one nod power i gotta hit supreme warrior to get on those leaderboards guys i'm still a far ways off but that's okay we do entertaining videos we're not exactly trying to go for the leaderboards but yes let's go ahead and get started let me go to the first map so if you guys are brand new to the game you haven't played sword fighters it's kind of like anime fighters you kill enemies except there's no units you guys have pets and the pets will help you guys do more damage to enemies well it doesn't really matter what map you guys guys are on because you guys can use these tips anyways the first one that i have though is get a good power or damage relic inside of dungeon that is the number one tip that i have for you guys in sword fighter simulator you can find dungeon mode in dark forest on the left side of the map when you guys spawn in because you guys keep asking me where is dungeon f minus if you guys complete dungeon mode you kill some of the bosses inside of here powerful relics that will help you guys in sword fighters you guys have seen this already, Red Festive Ornament. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've had this at some point. Or maybe you guys used it to level up your relics. But the number one tip that I have for you guys in Sword Fighters is just to get a good damage and power relic. You guys would be surprised. Some people are still using the Quang Scroll over here and be like, f minus, I already have a good damage and power relic. And I'm like, oh um, my, I, I guess. I mean, Quang Scroll, 700% power. But why settle for a Quang Scroll when you guys could go for a Necklace of Time over here? Room 24 of Hard Dungeon. Look at how much power percentage that is. 4,652. Now, I do level this uh, relic up a lot, and I carry you guys a lot. That's how I'm able to level this up. So this is level 23 relic, but I'm just showing you guys why settle for Quang Scroll? Why settle for, like, Soft Candle when you can get something better? There's a lot of aura relics and artifacts in the game, but the best power one that you guys can get i think it's called necklace of the sea or something it's on room 28 it gives like 200 percent more power than necklace of time so if you guys don't have uh, the necklace of the sea or whatever or a sea pendant that's okay you can use necklace of the time that's what i'm using and it gives almost 5,000 percent power this is what you guys should go for before that next update drops this is the second best in the game besides the one found on room 28 and it's literally the same thing they just changed the name necklace of the sea or something like that and it has just a little bit more power but you guys should always have a good power and a good damaging relic so this is what i use mainly for power my damaging one i mainly use the locked book and you guys mainly use the locked book as well you've heard it before in the official discord server that this is the best damaging relic in the game i do know that there's some gauntlets you guys can find on room 28 and they're legendary but apparently the locked book is better so this right now i'm telling you if you're watching this is the second best power you guys can get in the game, Artifact, Relic, and the Lockbook is the best damaging one you can get in the game. 
So if you guys get Fishy Fish on Room 28, you guys get Dragon Bones, Binding Band, Gear Roller, Radiating Paper. Don't settle for any of these. Always go for the best ones. Locked Book. And then of course the Power 1 Necklace of Time or Necklace of the Sea. Necklace of Time and Necklace of the Sea, a little bit difficult to get because they are mythical relics. But that's okay. That's where F- comes into play. If you guys in the description of this video, you like the video, you join my games, all you gotta do is follow my Roblox profile, I will carry you guys to room 28 in dungeon and whenever update number seven comes out in like i think a day or something like that i'll get you guys to room 32 because i can already almost i'm not saying one shot the boss but i can kill that boss on room 28 in like 30 seconds and when the update drops i'll probably kill him in like 10 seconds so that should be enough to for like room 32 depending on if i want to level up the lock book i'm still not sure if i'm going to but i'm just telling you guys right now my number one tip for you guys is always get a good power and damage relic and the best ones that i've shown you guys necklace of time necklace of the sea and locked book locked book you can get easily it's a rare it's like a 50 percent chance i think or something like that you guys are using piece of meats i've been using this for the longest time as well feel free to use this you can get in room 20 of hard dungeon and then necklace of time it's like a what one percent two percent chance to get so i understand if you guys can't get good drops you can still use piece of meat i've been using it for the longest time that's why f minus is where he is now you know we scale off we use lower tiered relics eventually running dungeon back to back and then we get better relics you guys do the same thing if you guys are like i don't know you're stuck on dark forest skull cove demon hill or you guys are stuck in like the mid-tier maps ancient sands enchanted woods maybe mystic mines you get a better power and damage relic you can accelerate your progress maybe you guys were struggling i don't know you're on mystic minds right now you're watching this video and you guys could not kill for the love of your life some of the enemies in the very back of the map or even some of these zombie miners that's why you get a better damaging relic you get the locked book best one in the game 250 percent crit multiplier 2400 percent damage and you level this up to like level 5 level 10 my gosh then you're gonna be able to kill some of these enemies way faster I'm telling you guys, some of these relics are like 10 times stronger than other relics. The lock book over here, I want to say it's probably about 2, 3, maybe 4 times better than the fishy fish. Fishy fish has 29% 100 damage. You would think it's better. However, locked book has that crit multiplier. Crit multiplier is like 2.5x times 2400. And because fishy fish doesn't really have crit multiplier, it's just stuck at 2900. So I'm telling you right now, guys, get that better power and damage relic. And then you guys eventually this golem it takes you what a thousand hits to kill now it only takes you 500 now it only takes you 100 hits to kill necromancer here it takes you one hour to kill but let's say you get the locked book and you level it up to level five you already have the locked book just level it up eventually you'll get to the point where it doesn't take an hour it only takes like i don't know 10 minutes to kill this guy which is average when i was in mystic mines it took me 30 minutes to kill necromancer and at that point i was still like free to play and pay to win a little bit combined i only had dual wield i didn't have any other game passes and stuff but yes that is my number one tip to you guys as noob to pro players in the game free to play or pay to win just get a better power and damaging relic it sounds simple but once again i'm telling you guys there are way better relics than you guys might not know or maybe you guys do know now the second tip that i have for you guys you know based on my experience in sword fighter simulator is you guys should ascend as much as possible whenever you guys hit that power requirement always ascend now you guys could like spend your money trying to like upgrade and stuff make sure you guys upgrade by the way every map that you go in before you ascend whenever you ascend you lose your power and you lose your coins so make sure you spend your coins first make sure you spend well, you can't really spend power but make sure you spend your coins on the upgrades you guys should be upgrading as well but if you ascend usually you get about three times more power than before you ascended my stats as a good example currently it says the warrior and it's 11.25 trillion every time i left click the power multiplier the next one's gonna be supreme warrior but it's 33.75 trillion so it's about a three times multiplier right now when i click i get how much power 6.39 sxd whenever i ascend i'll get three times as much that's how people are getting on the leaderboards over here they're ascending faster than everybody else a really good example right here you see f minus currently we're on the warrior rank everybody on the leaderboards right now is on the supreme warrior rank three times as much power you can tell because look at the lowest person rank 100 3.67 and 
and OD. All you gotta do is take whatever power you currently have, multiply it by three, and that's like an estimate of how much power you guys would have. So I have 790 OCD. Well then this guy over here, before he was able to like ascend to the next rank, just divide his power by three. Me and him would basically have the same amount of power. That's how you guys progress in the game. Make sure you ascend as much as you can. Make sure <clears throat> you guys ascend as much as you can. Now I know sometimes it's really tough to ascend. You'll probably be farming power. You got your slow auto clicker on. You don't even have dual wield. You don't even have the seeker weapon. You definitely should have a legendary at least because I had it as a free to play. But if you guys are just doing it like this, I know it sometimes it takes a long time to get power. So make sure you guys are using. Did I tell you guys first tip in the game? Use a power relic. This gives me almost 5000% power power boost. You guys use power boost. You guys use a legendary weapon. Make sure you guys, you know, get better enchantments on your weapon. But I'll talk a little bit about that later. But this is like the setup and then you get better pets as well. And now look at how much power I'm getting. 2.84 SXD power. Which actually I think is less. But you guys get the idea. It's because I had my secret weapons on earlier. But that just shows you the legendary almost as good as the secret weapons. Whenever you guys have a better power relic. Whenever you guys have better pets. So there's your tip right there. Ascend as much as you guys can. Just by getting better pets. You get better power multiplier. Better enchantment on your weapon. Power enchantment. You guys can get more power per click. Then if you guys are, you see my mouse cursor right there. I'm clicking on the screen just do it like that instead of just leaving slow auto clicker on you could definitely leave slow auto clicker on and then you guys won't disconnect but i'm just showing you guys if you want more power faster that way you can ascend you get a better power multiplier when you do this and then of course better relic but that is the second tip that i have for you guys i know that was a quick tip but trust me guys a lot of people they just like save up as much power as they can and they don't ascend so make sure you ascend because you will make all the power that you have back in like one or two hours you see how much i have right now 790 ocd power if i reset right now let's just say i ascended it took me let's just say four days maybe three or four days to get 790 ocd power if i ascended right now it would take me half a day maybe only like a couple hours to get back to where i was so make sure you guys ascend but before you ascend you know obviously get the upgrades obviously get better pets spend all your coins first the last tip though that f minus has for you guys and probably the most important tip and you guys probably already know this as pay to win and free to play get better enchants on your weapons i'm telling you guys you probably be like f minus i know exactly what i'm doing my enchantment on my weapon it has jolly five well i'm here to tell you guys jolly five is great but you can do better than that make sure you guys are going for double enchants even as a free to play player you guys can get double enchants because as a free to play i mean i'm not saying you won't be able to get the secret but it's very difficult so let's just say as free to play you have the mythic you have the legendary well all of those christmas raid shards you guys have been saving up right here and i've been saving up a bunch, bunch of these vibrant shards but all these christmas shards i have 500 all of these arcane shards re-roll your enchantments guys on the third map of the game get something better you should always have a separate power and damaging weapon damaging weapon to kill enemies power weapon to get better power in the game and the sword for power should always be on the map that you're on you're on mystic mines sacred lands marine castle that's for power for damaging weapons though it could be on any map of the game you can use a common sword you can use a sword from the first map you guys know that i use the god 2 enchantment sword from the first map you might think this is weak it's an old sword two power power doesn't mean anything for damage in the game though and when you're attacking the enemies for enchantments god enchantment look at that larger sword 37 percent more power 37 percent more damage 37 percent faster sword speed and this is probably one of the better ones 22.5 percent more crit chance you stack that with the locked book you stack stack that with like the gauntlets and i'm talking about the relics in the game by the way like the locked book here and there's another one called gauntlets i don't have it i fed it but you combine all of that together whatever enemy you're struggling to kill on any map of the game you're on mystic mines you're on enchanted woods let's just say you're on ancient sands you can't kill any of these dudes mummy over here that's why you get a better enchantment on your weapon the number one enchantment is the god enchantment after that you can make an argument for the christmas spirit enchantment or you guys could say blizzard but number one is god and then blizzard and then christmas spirit after that it's going to be like attack speed and damaging enchantments so i'm only going to keep one equipped because chances are if you're watching this video you only have one sword but i'm just giving you an example right here this is what i use for damage this is what i use to get to room 28 in dungeon and when the next update comes out this is what i'm going to use 
to get to room 32. But if you guys also have this, you want to take it one step further beyond. That's why I said before, even if you're pay to win, you already know all this stuff. Well, if you only have one enchantment on your weapon, you ideally should have two. And here's a really good example. This right here, Staff of the Undead, it has two enchantments that are crazy OP. Icicle 4 and Flurry 2. It gives me increased attack speed, but also gives me 62% increased damage. I stack that, plus I stack the God enchantment, and that's how F- usually pops off in Sword Fighter Simulator. Now, once again, you guys probably only have one weapon available, so I'm gonna unequip this. I get the God enchantment. This is how you guys get the God enchantment, or any kind of damaging enchantment in the game so you can kill enemies faster go to demon hill over here choose my, whatever machine that you guys want christmas or regular enchantment i like the regular enchantment better look for a common weapon so it only costs one shard to reroll it could be any map of the game look at that 420 out of one i can spin 420 enchantments 420 passives and then hopefully I'll end up getting the god enchantment. I'll get the tiny enchantment. Just go for attack speed. Go for damage. And then obviously if you can, go for the god enchantment. And even if you guys end up landing, even if you think your weapon is good, it can always be better guys. Once again, double enchantments are the best. So if you guys are struggling for power, what do you guys get? You obviously get a power enchantment. You might be like, damn, I got a huge three enchantment. That's OP. Like I said, you can do better. You can get double. Look at this, Jolly 5 and Jolly 2. 75% increased power and 37.5% increased power. That's how you guys get better in the game. Most players, well, they're pay to win, but if you're free to play and you guys want to be strong, they have double enchantments. Those free to play players have double and huge five. How do I get that F minus? It's really tough to get. It isn't if you guys are using a common weapon because it costs one shard to reroll. How do you guys get these arcane shards? How do you get the Christmas shards? Make sure you guys are doing Christmas raid. I do Christmas raid every time it pops up in the server. I have 552 Christmas shards. I used to have a thousand, but I, I like blew them all up. You might be able to get some something good with the regular machine here once again if you guys want to progress faster in the game you're having trouble killing enemies you need more power so you can ascend go for enchantments but not just enchantments what do you guys got to go for double enchantments you want double power double attack speed double something don't just settle for one tiny five is good but you can get tiny five plus an attack speed one on top of that and i'm about to show you guys right now what i mean so currently the two weapons that i'm using right before this update drops is jolly one and jolly five 75 percent increased power 25 percent increased power that's what you guys should go for double power now it could be better but i'm gonna sell it for this and i'm gonna keep it this right here this one i might change it it's flurry three and jolly two jolly two 37 percent increased power which is nice and then flurry three 30 percent increased faster sword speed pretty damn op but I feel like we can do even better, and I'm only doing this because I'm paid to win, and also because I have 552 Christmas shards, guys. I don't know what to do with them, so I might as well use them for a video. Why don't we try to reroll the enchantments on our Seeger weapons, and then if you guys are watching, reroll the enchantments on your legendaries, reroll the enchantments on your commons. I guess let's start it off with that. I'm gonna use a common weapon. Let's go for damage. So you guys can use the Christmas machine for this. It only costs one shard to reroll. Whatever it lands on regardless if it's like i don't know if it's icicle five who cares go for double enchantments you'll progress at double the speed so you see this right here if you guys ever landed on this icicle four and you're like damn this is really op no you guys got to keep on re-rolling to get the double enchantments so you get double the damage always do that guys that's how people are progressing faster in the game and that's why if you're stuck on any map you're stuck on any enemy you can't kill them do this method right here and then hopefully you get something good. And you should get something good because you guys will have a lot of shards. Look at that. Flurry 4. All we got to do is like pull like a damage. Damn, look at that right there. 37% increased sword speed. 37% increased damage. That's an example right there of what you guys should do. Oh my gosh. Now we're really popping off in the game, guys. I just got to look for that enchantment. Damn. Here's another one. Smite plus light 5. Don't just settle for one. 30% increased sword speed is nice. But this 50% critical chance, you might think critical is not good. I used to think critical 
soul's not good. But when you pair this with the gauntlets, the gauntlets are like, oh my gosh, insane. And I'm talking about the relic that you guys find on room 28 of dungeon. They were like really OP if you stack critical chance. So that's what you guys should do, I guess, for the remainder of the video now that I've given you guys my top three tips in the game. Well, I'm actually thinking I might just keep these, actually. Sorry, guys. But I can give you more tips, all right? These are just like miscellaneous tips. I'll run through them. Make sure you guys claim your chest over here every single day. And make sure you guys join the group over here. Join the, like, Sword Fighter Simulator group. You can get an extra chest. Sometimes they give power boosts, luck boosts, coin boosts, and stuff. And also verify your Twitter account right here. I don't have a Twitter account, F-. minus. That's okay. Niels TV. You guys know he's a great YouTuber. I watch his videos all the time. He gave you guys his uh, Twitter handle. I think it's Niels TV like this just type it in and if that doesn't work that's okay type it in like this if you type this in right here it'll verify even though it's already verified use his Twitter account I used his shout out to him you guys go check out his videos eventually he will hit the leaderboard soon and then besides that make sure you guys are claiming these gifts you see this normal present here destroy them every I guess one hour as much as you can look at what we get festive kitty pet ornament arcane shards raid ticket and coin boost same thing with this one destroy the presents and then the other present is going to be on demon hill here you guys keep destroying these this is how i get my raid shards yes i do christmas raid but dude i have 500 again and this right here i have 400 i have so many vibrant shards i've been carrying you guys in dungeons so if you guys need help just join my game in sword fighter simulator f minus will do the best job he can to get you guys better relics before update number seven hopefully this video was entertaining enough and helpful enough to you guys really do appreciate your guys' support and until next time guys f minus will see you in the next video